Thank you for coming back to another one of my Tesla how-to videos. In this one, we're going to be using FSD to go from my house to Target. So I'm pulling out of my garage manually. I pop my hat back and I put on my sunglasses so the FSD camera, the camera inside the cabin, doesn't keep nagging at me. I found this method works best. Close my garage door. I'm manually going to type in Target. A lot of times I use the voice dictation to take me there, but I change it up once in a while, especially for the videos. Now that I'm already in drive from rolling out of my garage, I press the right scroll ball wheel on the steering wheel, and that's what initiates FSD. And this way the car can take off and accelerate away. So we're going down the street, nothing big's happening. It's cautious in a residential area. We are gonna be coming up to a stop sign here and the FSD camera does notify it, does see it. So it'll pop up on the camera. It also, if you see there's a pedestrian walking on the left side, the Tesla kind of moves over a little bit. Over the couple months we've had our Tesla, I constantly would take over. And when you turn off FSD, it asks you why. And I would tell the system that it's because I wanted more space for a walker and the AI system has learned. So now when I drive through my subdivision, it does leave a wide berth, a lot of space. Now I'm coming up here and there is a car coming at me and a camper in the road. Tesla did a great job at slowing down and avoiding it to make sure it didn't hit either obstacle. I had my hands ready just in case. I unblurred my speed so you could see how the Tesla reacted by slowing down and adjusting. And I touched my steering wheel only to save the dash cam footage so I could do that picture in picture for you. Now, as it comes up to this stop sign, it is seeing the stop sign and pulling up and it stops right at the sign, which is the legal requirement. It will start to creep forward like a human driver would because as it looks to the left, it can't see traffic far enough out by the stop sign. So it creeps forward until it sees its window to go and then it pulls out and accelerates away. Now it's cruising down and accelerating and there's no obstacles or any issues in my way coming up ahead we will have a roundabout now the teslas in my experience have done fantastic going through roundabouts and monitoring and checking what it is in this roundabout i'd like you to pay particular attention because it slows down for the cars in front of me but as there's no car at all coming on the left it doesn't really come to anywhere near close to a stop it just crawls right through it as it should uh, but we're going to go through another roundabout in a minute and it'll be interesting to see the difference between this roundabout and that roundabout to really prove how much Tesla is actually watching and yielding for cars in that system when it goes through there. So now we are going down the road, nothing to really say here. I am adjusting the maximum speed with the right scroll ball. I wanted to make sure my car wasn't excessively speeding, so I just kind of scrolled it down a little bit. I am doing FSD in standard mode to make sure that it's cautious enough for my liking, but not too slow. Chill mode for me is too slow, but hurry mode's nice and straight, but I don't like it in the turns. But it's doing a great job staying in its lane. I put it to the speed max that I like, and... It's avoiding traffic, so everything's going well here. It's always good to keep your eyes out open for side traffic as they come along. We're just going straight down the road, but you know, always be a defensive driver. Keep your eyes peeled. It is supervised full self-driving, so it's still good to pay attention. I don't really have to take over very often. Typically when I do, it's because it's going into like construction or something that I don't want, or it's going in a different path. As we're creeping up here, slowing down for a railroad but right after this railroad is the next roundabout and as we approach that i didn't unblur my speed this time i should have but it there is another car in the roundabout and tesla really kept an eye on them so i put the picture in picture here for you to see what the car sees in the bottom right hand corner but it sees the car going through the roundabout and it really comes to a slow yield it almost comes to a complete stop here because it's not sure what that car on the left is going to do once it saw the car wasn't coming it took off i'm touching the wheel again just to save the dash cam footage i'm not actually driving you have to press and hold that left wheel button to save what the car sees save your dash cam footage and now the car is ready to take off again you can see my dog on the right he's just enjoying the ride <laughs> um yeah, everything is going good here. 
just trailing behind. We're actually going pretty slow for this road. In fact, the car in front of me is going 10 under, but uh, Tesla's keeping its distance, keeping its pacing quite nicely. Um, it does that. It's kind of like the adaptive cruise, but it's all built into full self-driving, which is handy and nice. The one thing I'll point out is so far in my drive, I haven't had the car yell at me once yet. There's been no nagging. And it's, again, just the niceness of wearing sunglasses and popping your hat back or not wearing a hat at all. Uh, we're going pretty slow for this turn but because this is a 55-mile-an-hour road. And there's a slight bank to the left. Now, if the I wasn't going slow because of the van in front of me, the Tesla would have taken that turn. But it knows to slow down properly, so you don't have to be cautious like it's going to take the turn even at high speeds too fast. And here we are coming up to our Home Depot, so we'll be taking our left turn. For living in a small town, there was a shocking amount of traffic here for the uh, the local area. So we actually end up staying at this left turn for a while. Traffic starts coming up behind us, but the car is in the perfect position and it's doing everything right, just as it should, which is excellent. After this van, it sees its opening. So the Tesla is going to make its left turn in there. You can see even in the parking lot, there's quite a few cars coming up. Sometimes I take over here so I can choose specifically which row and which area I want to park in. But I was curious to see specifically where at Home Depot the Tesla would go to. I've noticed over time it changes where it chooses to stop if you don't take over. When I first got the car and I would tell it to go to Home Depot, it would want to go like behind the building, which was weird. Uh, and then it got better and it started taking me right to the front door, but there's more than one front door. Now it's taking me to the employee pro area, which I go to Home Depot a lot. So I don't know if it's adapted to where I park when I go there frequently. I don't know, but it is impressive. But either way, it comes up here and straight ahead of me is the, is the pro parking. One thing that was a little weird here is it got to the end of its path and I'm still just in the parking lot road and it stopped and put itself in park. But it wasn't a big deal. I just stepped on the brake and it shifted into drive and now I'm manually driving. I'm going to pull up and park off to the side here. Uh, normally, I would use the auto park feature and I would choose the parking space and let it back in. But I was in a hurry to park because I had a curiosity that just struck me at this moment. I was curious if while I was in the car, if I could choose to summon the car with me in the car. So it's the same thing as self-driving, but could I drop a pin at the other side of the parking lot? Turns out you can. It was pretty cool. Uh, it's slow. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you.